Have you ever had a cool image like this and thought to yourself, man, I wish I could just convert this image and tr make turn it into life, make turn it into a video? Well, in this three part video series, I'm going to show you how to take images like this and convert it to videos. AI today is like a this. firefighter riding a giant robotic T Rex, navigating a futuristic cityscape, battling complex problems with pre. I'm going to show you how to do this within this three part series, all automated. This is super cool stuff. Let's jump right in. All right, so this automation is broken down into three parts. The first part, which we'll be covering in this video, is the creation. So we're going to convert the image into a video. Okay, the second part is where we add the overlays. So we're going to add the music, we're going to add the voiceover, and we are going to add the caption that goes on the video as well. And the third video in the, to complete this whole process is to post it on social media. In this case, we'll be posting it to YouTube to make it a YouTube short. Okay, so. Let's go over this piece that we'll be doing today. Um, this is the entire automation. And if you haven't used a software like this, it's called make.com. Make is a tool that allows you to combine multiple software products and allow all those uh, products to communicate with each other. Okay. So just to give you a, a basic overview of what's, what's happening here. Okay. Um, the first thing you're going to use is Anthropic Claude to come up with an idea. And then, and, and then when we get the details, you'll see that I, I have Claude thinking about some crazy different scenarios that you see. We saw a fireman on top of a electronic T-Rex, <laughs> right? So there's things like that we have to come up with an idea. And then I use Flux AI um, and in a video. I'll, I included one of my videos on how to uh, create uh, images with Flux AI. And uh, I'll include a link to it somewhere in this video and in the show notes so that you can take a look at that video as well. If you haven't taken a look at that video, I, I encourage you to stop here. Go to that video where I go into detail on how to create images with Flux AI. And then we can come back here to this video. Okay. So these next few steps, so that the, these next steps here uh, is where, sorry, these next four steps is where the, the uh, image is being produced using Flux AI. Next is we come up with a video prompt. The, uh, the video prompt is going to look at the image that was created and look at the, the picture idea and then come up with a prompt. So that way we can um, come up with a video. Then we uh, broke it into different pieces. Okay. So uh, we use um, Runway to convert the convert the image to a video. Then we uh, use uh, Cloudinary software to then manipulate the video. So it allows us to combine videos, allows us to put out overlays and things like that. And then we just throw it onto an air table. Okay. So let's go into some of the pieces. Okay. Cause Runway is a super, super cool tool. Um, last week they announced that, um, actually make announced that they had the API integration with Runway and I was super excited for this. So that's why I jumped right on it. So I can show you how to implement Runway's technology or raise AI technology into your uh, automations. So Runway allows for you to actually take a text and convert it into an image and then take that image and convert it to a video. Okay. But the API integration only allows for image to video. Okay. It, once you, once you, if you need more information about Runway, you can kind of take a look at what they have going on. You can see how they can be able to beautify different images and turn images into life, which is, is just a pretty, pretty cool thing. Um, in order to get access to Runway, you have to go to uh, dev.runwayml.com. Once you log in here, then you'll have um, you'll be able to uh, create an API, get get access to the API where you'll get an API key. What you just have to do is just have to load, you just have to load some. You have to fund the account um, by entering your your card information, and then they require a minimum of ten dollars. And um, once you load the ten dollars over there, then you'll be able to um, to run uh, automations through me.com. Okay, because when you connect the Runway app, app and make is going to prompt you to put in your API key. Okay, all right. Um, the next tool that we use is called Cloudinary. So Cloudinary is um, um, it's awesome. So it allows you to manipulate images and videos on the fly and through the API. So originally, when I was thinking about this, thinking about this project, I wanted to use um, Canva, for example. But Canva doesn't have any tools that allow you to edit the videos through an API. You have to go into there their GUI interface in order to um, um, edit images and edit videos and things like that. But my whole, <laughs> my whole MO is doing everything automated. So uh, Cloudinary was able to, I was able to achieve that with Cloudinary. Cloud, Cloudinary, it, uh, you could actually sign up for free. Um, and then they have a free uh, tier of pricing. So um, um, the free tier actually is pretty good. It allows you to have 25 uh, monthly credits. And I've been kind of using it a, 
doing a lot of testing and for what we want to do it actually is, is, is pretty cool i think the free the free account will be more than enough to at least get you started to create these videos but as you grow you can um, um increase that okay all right so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a trigger and the trigger in this in this case is what we're, what we're using is we're using anthropic claude to create our image okay so let's uh add claude here and as i mentioned earlier anytime you connect any um module to this automation the first time you, that you connect to it, uh, you're going to be prompted to enter credentials. And, and in most cases, you just need to have an API, an existing API, and that API um, needs to be funded. And it's the same for Anthropic Cloud, OpenAI, which we'll be using as well. Cloudinary, as I mentioned, Runway, the different products that we're using today, you're going to need to have some kind of connections with them or accounts established. You have to have it funded, so you can go into the billing section. But when you go into their billing section, you just want to make sure that... Um, you add a card and you fund the account because when you, if you run, if you run the automation and it's not funded, it's, it's not going to work. So just want to give you a heads up there. All right. So let's uh, create our picture idea. Okay. So we're going to be using Anthropic Claude Sonnet and the max tokens we want to use is a thousand and we want to add a message. The role is going to be user and the content is going to be text and we want to add our text here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and then we go over it together. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So uh, here's a text. Oops. Here's a text. You're an, ex you're an expert when it comes to generating attention grabbing ideas. Your role is to think outside of the box and generate an idea that will grab the attention of the viewer. An example one, example one is a woman in a business suit wearing heels running away from an erupting volcano. <laughs> example two is a businessman jumping. Uh, jumping out of an exploding airplane, reaching for a parachute. One of the third is a businesswoman being carried up the Empire State Building by King Kong. So I gave it a few examples like this, just so that I'm giving the AI an idea of the kind of images that I want for this. Um, of course, you can add your own examples and you can kind of, if you want to make it a little bit less dramatic and make it a little bit, you know, within your context, you can do that as well. But I'm just trying to go to the extreme to show you the length we can take this, okay? Um, the final thing I wrote is I'll put the idea you come up with only so because a lot of times um the ai can add different things to the output but i want to i want to specify that it's only going to add what we need okay all right so it's okay and we're going to just rename this we're going to rename this to uh picture idea all right let's hit save and let's just run it once so let's see what it comes up with all right this is a ballerina performing a perfect pirouette on the wing of flutter jet mid-flight the two two fluttering in the wind as she gracefully dodges missiles. Okay, so that's cool. All right. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we actually need to um, create the image. Okay. So we are going to use um, OpenAI for that. And OpenAI, what we want to do is we want to uh, uh, create a completion. And we want to use GPT-4 Mini as the model. Or we can, yeah, we can use 4 Mini. And... We are going to then have the, add a user as the role, and then we would, did, did, did. yeah, okay. And let's do here. I'm gonna just cheat again, and then we gotta write out text context. Okay. Uh, what I wrote is that you are a prompt writer. You'll be given an idea for a picture. Based on this text, you will produce a uh, descriptive prompt for image generation. Do not include anything other than the text, and do not add a new line to the end of the text. And then I go in and I added the, the JSON. The reason I'm producing it in JSON is because um, we are using, again, um, Flux AI for this. And um, uh, we need to we need to export it into a JSON format, okay? And uh, yeah, and I gave you some examples down here, um, describing the person, they hear the facial expression, and I gave it a few example, you know, like a charismatic speaker with a uh, with short, Brown here, round face, clean shaving and wearing glasses. And I just go on and on and provide some different um, descriptions. All right. So then as far as the text is going to be the picture idea. Good. All right. We hit OK. And then we want to rename this to image prompt. Image prompt. Cool. And then we want to the emoji. And we want to add this. Oops. Come on. There we go. Hit OK. Hit save, and we'll run it again. Okay, now we'll see what a, what, what prompt comes up with this time. All right, cool. Let's see this. 
All right, so the prompt that I came up with is a, a graceful ballerina with her hair in a tight um, tutu. Oh, so pull, yeah, so pull the same thing that was from in the idea and then just, it just formatted it uh, correctly, okay? All right, so next, let's just see. I'm just gonna copy this here, make it easier, and we'll go for it. All right, so again, I, I'm going to uh, break details with the Flux, with the Flux, uh, the Flux AI um, video on exactly how I did this. But one thing that I changed in the prompt, which I didn't point out, is I want it to be a long form, a long, uh, a long form uh, video. So I changed the aspect ratio to nine by sixteen. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to do like a, a wide, you can do sixteen by nine as well. So if you want to do wide, you go sixteen by nine. But in this case, I'm going long form, so we can use it for shorts, or if we want to use it for a reel or anything like that. This module includes my API reference. I won't show it, but again, if you look at little, if you look at the other video, I have a dummy one in there that you can um, kind of copy from. Okay, but this is basically making a HTTP request to the server, so that way you can uh, initiate the image creation. Okay, so after that, what I want to do is um, want to take a three minute nap because it takes a few it takes a few minutes for the image to be generated. So we don't want to have the automation move past the image creation. So we just take a, a three minute nap here. Next, what we want to do is we want to um, replicate the image, okay? Play this, let's copy that here. And again, these modules um, shows, uh, these modules show <laughs> my API key, so I won't show it. But again, if you go to the other video, you'll be able to see exactly what I did here. These last four modules was cr the creation using um, Flux AI. So what we're gonna do is gonna just do we're gonna run this now and then we're gonna take a look at the image, All right? So the automation it's so it's part of the automation is complete with the image creation. So again, we created a picture with Anthropic Claude. Then we use Flux AI via Replicate to get the to create the image. I'm using the Flux AI technology. So let's jump over to the Replicate uh, dashboard to take a look at the picture. So this is the picture right here that was created, and uh, we see a ballerina. Look like she's on a train track, and she have uh, some different uh, birds flying around her. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. So um, the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, create a, a prompt for the video. OK. And uh, what we need to do, actually, is we need to create two scenes because with um, Runway, Runway only allows 10 second videos. So we need to create two scenes because the minimal requirement on any social media platforms is about 15 seconds for shorts. Definitely the case for uh, um, YouTube and definitely the case for um, Instagram. Uh, they only allow a, a minimum of 15 seconds for the video. So with uh, runway, only um, 15 seconds, I'm sorry, only 10 second videos are allowed uh, through, at least through the through the API. So we got to create two videos and then we'll con concatenate them or, you know, kind of put them together and so we'll have a 20 second video, which would um, exceed the minimum requirements for the social media platforms. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to create a video prompt. So what we got to do is we are going to open up open AI. And what we want to do in this case, we, we want to message an assistant. All right. So what I did is I created a bot in um, open AI or they call it assistant. And the assistant is, um, once you go into platform that open this is the same place you, you will go in the event of, um, adding your API keys and things like that. But here you can go to the, the assistant and what you could do is create a bot and the bot is basically giving open AI a set of instructions that they will follow each time. So instead of you having to write all these instructions, you, when using it frequently, you could just simply, you simply program a bot and then call upon that bot every time you need to use these instructions. Okay. So these are the instructions for runway and these are their, some of their recommendations when it comes to, uh, compiling a video and things that you can prompt to generate the video. Okay. And I actually got this from their site. So if we jump over to, uh, let's see, where is it? Give me a second. I'll jump over here to the prompting guide. So they have a prompting guide. And I'll include a link to this in the show notes as well. And their prompt, their prompting guide shows you exactly what to do. They give you sample prompts, uh, like this one that says, uh, subject cheerfully poses her hands forming a peace sign, things like that. And then they give you camera styles, angles, um, they they go, they go into the lighting styles. So you have like a, a lens flare, you have a backlit, you have a side lit, you know, things like that. Um, they also go into the, the movement types. So you can have, you know, emerges, grows, explodes, things like that. And it goes into the style and aesthetic. So you can go to like a moody style, a, a cinematic style, and um, iridescent style, things like that. And the text, then you go to textiles, you have a bold, you have graffiti, which is, which I like to use a lot, neon, um, varsity, embroidery, things like that, okay? And they give you 
different ways to, to, do, to do that. So I basically comp compiled this information and I, and I, and I put it into uh, the bot. So I basically told the bot, this is, you know, to use it when it when it prompting to make the video. So use these different uh, tools in order, in order to uh, help it generate a prompt. Okay. All right, cool. So let's go back here to the automation and the assistant I'm going to call it. I'm going to call the runway assistant that we just, um, sure. It's a user's the role and the message. Let's just cheat again. And let's copy that on message. Perfect. Okay. Oops. Wrong thing. No, that's right. It's perfect. Sorry. But I'll place the wrong thing. All right. So what I wrote is that says I'm using the attached image. Generate two prompts, two prompt text descriptions. Each prompt should be in line with the, with the image idea to produce a video. Think of each prompt as a continuous scene. Do not include anything other than the text and do not add a new line at the end of the text. You must use the below guidelines to create the prompt. I'm exclude characters like double quotes, backslashes, or even some Unicode. And then I give it the JSON um, to output. The reason I'm doing JSON is because I want to uh, separate the two prompts. I know we, we got to use a uh, parser to, to, to help us with that. And then the image idea is going to be here. Okay. It's going to be what we got from Anthropic Cloud. So let's ask this. Here's our picture idea. Text response. Good. The image file is going to be what we got from um, the replicate. Okay. Let's see. Go here. Here we go. Uh -oh. Peter's a little slow. Okay. Let's go back in. All right. Let's go back here. Oh, sorry. I'm not doing the image file. I'm doing the URL. Apologies, get on the URL. We're using a, a URL for this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the data output and uh, right here, we're gonna use this URL right here. Awesome. All right, we'll hit okay. And let's see, let's rename this to video prompt. Video prompt. Cool. Awesome. All right. So I tried to cheat and add the, the links, the URLs here, but for, I guess for some reason when I was copying and pasting in it, copy and pasted it, it wasn't uh, pasting correctly and it was causing an issue. So I just reran the scenario to save on time. And if we go back into the replicate dashboard, we'll see the new image that was created. And as we go along, it's going to be creating different images, but it's going to be the same, it's the gist of, of what we are um, trying to accomplish. So it's a ballerina on a train track. And this time it's night and you can see some, uh, it's a beautiful image. Okay. So what we want to get out of this is the actual two scenes um, for the two videos that we would like to create. Okay. So this is the first scene, uh, camera movement, uh, begin the up close shot of a ballerina, faces gracefully spins. And then the second scene is continue with the momentum. The camera um, circles around the ballerina, the dynamic motion. So that's pretty cool, right? Well, what we're going to do is we want to then parse these two um, scenes so that we can um, use those, those variable elements for uh, runway. Okay. So what we want to use is we want to use a tool that it's built into make called uh, a JSON. Oops, JSON. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna parse the JSON. And the string that we want is the string from the results here. Okay. All right. And to test it, let's just uh, try to go with the copy and paste again. Okay. To save on time. So let's uh, copy this. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this module only and then we'll paste our results here. Is it okay? Oops, I didn't, did I save it? Okay. Perfect. Oh, yes, it is safe. So you can see um, the output, we can minimize input. The output, it, it bundled these into two different scenes. So you have scene one and scene two. So now when we build, when we continue with the build of our automation, we can uh, reference these two scenes. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is this create a router. Okay, create a router. And the first route we need to Pull out, pull out friends over at runway. Okay. The runway, what we want to do is we want to generate a video from an image. Okay. All right. All right. Wait a second. And the image that we need is we need the image that we pulled from, um, that we, that we pulled from replicate. So let's just minimize everything here. And we need this image here in data output one. So we need this. And the prompt that we need is here. The prompt text is going to be from the video prompt from scene one, right? So we go to the JSON and we're going to do scene one. All right. Awesome. And okay. 
And then let's do this. Let's rename this to. Let's rename it. Let's hit create video. Then we're going to do this called a scene one. Create video scene one. And let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's call one. Hit OK. And let's see what we can do first. What we need to do is let's see if we can run it once. Let's run the module only. And we need this item. Let's see if we can pull it. Actually, let's do it from here. Let's see if it'll give us that uh, image. Dead. Of course, our fingers, we don't have to run the whole thing again. Let's do this. And um, the JSON is here. Scene one is this right here. And let's hit OK. Let's see if it runs. Okay, we'll see. Okay, you know, one thing we didn't do is we want to add 10 seconds and we want to do 19. That's what we do 9 by 16. We did edit those values and let's try to run it again. This is scene one. And here, let's see if we can get this URL again. Make sure we get the full URL. And hopefully, we don't have to run the entire thing again. All right, so it looks like we're gonna have to, uh, it looks like we're gonna have to run the whole thing again for some reason. All right, so, all right, so we're back. So, all right, so that this the video was produced correctly. It looks like after we ran the scenario, but a new image was, was created. Uh, it looks like a, a man in a tuxedo, and the scene is uh, a chef juggling, supposed to be juggling knives with flames in his arm during a media shower on a tightrope between buildings. <laughs> so that's something like crazy, but it looks, it looks cool, right? Okay, so let's go in see if we can retrieve the the uh the video okay so let's copy this and let's see if we can take a look here all right so this is the video that was created um you can see that it pulled the, pulled the angle and you can it's, it's going like a, a, a top view and this is this is the video and it's the media shower behind them so <laughs> this is what the ai produced which is pretty cool okay they go from this a straight image like this to a video is pretty awesome. So this will be the first scene of the, the the video, and then we'll produce a second scene that would uh let's see what the second scene entails. So if we go to the second scene, the second scene will be uh, an, another aerial view. The camera circles the chef, capturing the, the intensity of the juggling and a mesmerizing blend of uh, city lights and meteors, and creating a breathtaking symphony of movement and light. So the, the second scene is supposed to be uh, the cam angle this one kind of circling the the gentleman on the uh, tightrope okay all right so let's just continue to build this so the next piece what we need to do is we need to take uh, the video and we need to upload the first scene into cloudinary so cloudinary is a tool that we'll be using mostly in the second uh, piece of this three part video series and it will allow us to create overlays and allow us to combine uh the image the, the sorry combine the video into one into one video because we have two two ten second scenes that we need to combine into a 20 second um total i guess we can call it a movie or a video okay so let's continue all right so the next thing we need to do is with cloudinary so what we need to do is we need to upload this document this uh video to cloudinary cloudinary what we need to do is we need to upload a resource let's just actually look at all the options we need to upload a resource and uh the file type is going to be a uh, url and what we want to do is we want to get the file. So the file is going to be the generated video. And then we need the, this link right here. The resource type is going to be video. All right. And then what we want to do is we can put it into a folder or you don't, you don't have to put it into a folder, but I'm organizing um, my videos into folders. Then uh, create a folder called vertical videos and upload. And um, let's, let's take a look at the Cloudinary platform. So with the Cloudinary, here's it right here. You have the option to actually do all the video editing through their um, user interface, but we are going to be doing it obviously through the, the API. So we go to the media library. Um, we open that up and once you open it up, you'll be able to see all the videos that we uploaded. You'll see some, some test videos that I've done here. Um, this is what I showed you earlier. This is some of the images that we worked on and they have some stock 
uh, images as well in the stock videos but let's go back here and what we want to do is we want to um let's see let's see what the cheat here sorry second we'll put this up here that the wrong thing let's do this and then let's see if it'll allow us to run this module only but let's just name it first need to upload Upload video. Let's say upload video. Okay. Cool. And let's just rename. Let's just try to run this module only. Hopefully, it let us do us a break this time. Awesome. All right. So we uploaded it to Cloudinary. And with Cloudinary, if we go back into the media, let's say refresh, and we should see that, that new um, the new uh, video uploaded, which is right here, which is cool. All right. So if we double click on this, there's some important piece that I want to uh, show you really quickly. Um, Cloudinary uses what's called a, um, an ID. So they use a public ID. So these public IDs are very important because this is how you can reference these videos. And, um, this is, th th these public IDs would allow us also to manipulate the videos as well, which is going to be very crucial for part two of the video of this uh, series. So I just want to point that out to you and the access is public, but as long as you can, you need to have this public ID. Okay. All right. So um, the next piece that we need to do <clears throat> is after uh, we want to save this public ID. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so what we can do is we can store this as a variable. So variable, what we want to do is we want to set the variable. The variable is going to be, we're going to call it scene one. And we're going to call it public. public ID. And it's going to be scene one, public ID. We want to pull the public ID, right? Okay. And we're going to need two versions of this public ID and I'll, and I'll explain it later because, because the public ID, if we notice, if we go back, if we go back here, when we look at the public ID, you see how it has a slash here, the slash could be, we need to include the public ID in the URL and we have to exclude the slash because the, the slash is obviously a critical um, piece of every URL. If you look at the, if you look at any URL, they have backslashes, but we don't want to have it mess up our URL. So we need to do what's called, uh, um, like an, like an ASCII, uh, replacement. So I'll show you that right now. Okay. So we need to go back again, go to tools and we need to set a variable. That's it. So variable, right? The variable name again is going to be, let's just see public ID and here public ID. Uh, we call it replaced. And what we want to do is we want to replace. Oops. Right. So what we want to do is use this replaced, uh, string tool, right? So if you look here at this example, they use the, the example, hello world and hello and hi, they, they was able to separate it by, uh, this particular case, they would, they replace the word hello with hi, but what we want to do is we want to replace the backslash. Oh, with a colon and that's once you read the uh instructions for um for um for cloudinary they, they specified that those they specified that those um those ids the public ids have backslashes but when you're using the url to manip manipulate any images you have to um change the backslash to a colon so that's what we're going to do here okay so again we just need the public id and we want to replace it we want to replace the backslash with um Oops, with a colon, right? So what we do right here is we're saying that with the public ID that has a backslash, we want to replace the backslash with a colon. Okay, hit okay. And let's just, uh, let's just save this. I'm going to call it, uh, uh, let's name save public emoji ID. Okay, rendering this. All right. Awesome. So next thing we want to do is we could actually just copy this, save one time and we're going to paste, we're going to add it here, delete this, and let's just do the same thing in here. Okay. Let's replace this. It's actually over here. Instead of scene one, we want to go to scene two, hit okay. And let's rename this to scene two. All right. And 
Same thing. Perfect. Vertical video is pulling it from 13, which is great. Um, and the reason I know if every, every module has a number attached to it. So that way, and if you, if you like hover over the, 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 the code here, it'll, it'll, it'll kind of, um, prompt or kind of pulsate the actual module. So let you know where it's pulling that, um, that variable from just a little trick there. The public ID is going to be public ID. This is probably scene two. And it's going to be plenty of from 14, right? 14. So in this particular case, we don't need to do any, uh, we don't need to replace the backslash of this one because what we're doing is we're combining the video, um, scene one with scene two. So when we concatenate those two variables, the scene two is going to be at the end. So the backslash is fine, but then in the middle of the, the URL, then we need to make sure that that the middle of that URL doesn't contain any, um, any backslashes. Cool. All right. Perfect. So the next piece we need to do is, and I'm, I'm skipping steps here as far as running this every time. And I'm going to run the entire thing once we're all done. So we can kind of take a look at it. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually pull these variables. So if we go back here and we go to tools again, uh, and then in tools, we want to get variable. All right. This one, we're going to get actually get multiple variables because we're going to get multiple scenes. Okay. And let's see, we're going to get the scene one. It's replaced. I think that's what I called it. Yes, scene one replace public ID. Let's copy it here. This will be safe. Scene one replace public ID. And we just need scene two public ID. Okay. So what we're doing is uh, I'm gonna tell you why we're doing this in a second. So whenever you use a router, right? Whenever you use a router, everything that's on that particular route stays within that route. So if we need any data from a specific route, we pass that through variables. Okay. So that's why at the end of each route, we are setting variables. So that way we can call on these variables for in the next route. Okay. So basically let's just take a step back and take a look at what we did, what we've done so far. We, uh, had a picture idea. We created the image using flux AI Then we created the video prompt. The video prompt then is going to create two scenes for us. Um, and it's going to be two 10 second scenes, right? Then after it does that, if it parses that, that prompt, so that way we can pull those variables to our different scenes. And the first, the first route is going to create the first scene via the runway application, the AI application, it creates the first scene, but then with the instructions given, and then it takes that first scene and uploads it to, um, Cloudinary. And then we pulled information that we need from Cloudinary, which is those um, public IDs from Cloudinary. And then we create scene two, do the same thing for scene, scene two. And now this third route, what we're going to do now is we got to combine scene one with scene two. So that way it'll create a 20 second video. Cause as you, if you remember for each runway, for each runway uh, scene is only 10 seconds. And if you even scroll down, it only allows for either a five second, five second video or 20 second or a 10 second video. But the minimum requirements for any social media platform is 15 seconds. So we just want to generate a, a 20 second video. Okay. All right. So this we want to rename um, to uh, get public ID. Um, public, oops. Public IDs. If you stuck with me to this long, you're, you're committed and you really want to see how this turns out and I appreciate it. All right. So the next thing is I uh, want to do a transformation. So what we want to do is again, we're going to use the upload resource, um, through uh, Cloudinary. We want to upload a resource and this is where the magic happened with Cloudinary. And what I love about this application is it allows you to manipulate, uh, manipulate, uh, images and uh, in this case, we're using videos through a URL. Okay. And, uh, we're going to go into it right now. So the, the file type is going to be a stored URL. And I'm going to pull this right here. Okay. And then we're going to take a look at the notes here. So, all right, cool. So what, what we need to do is, um, via this URL, the first thing we need to do is we need to um, do a splice. So we're telling the URL that we splice in the video, we gave it the dimensions, which is, our, um, the width is 768 by 1280. And the way you get the dimensions is by, if you go back into, uh, the cloud management. You can look at the dimensions right here. It's a uh, uh, 768, which is the width and the height is 1280. Okay. So, and so that's what we specified here and the scene, what we need is we need the, the, we need this right here. So remember, since this is going to be in the center of the URL. So the video is going to be scene one, replace the public ID, they replace that black, that backslash with a colon Remember, And at the end, the, 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 uh, the second, the second, um, video. Is going to be a public ID too. Okay. So I know this looks confusing, but we're going to take a look at it. Um, the, the notes uh, right now, this is 
complete this, we want to do like, a video. The folder we're going to use again is vertical videos. We'll hit OK and let's make sure we save. OK, but let's go here. So if we go to the uh, the overlays in the cloud area uh, do documentation, it kind of goes into detail. That's a, the magic that you can do. You can do uh, you can add like logos over your your videos. You can um, you can add um, you can combine them. You can trim, you can concatenate, which is what we're doing right now. We are concatenating two videos. Uh, if we go here, um, we look at the code concatenate media. So this is the, this is what I use right here uh, where we upload. And this particular case, it has demo, but you just have to look into your account to see what uh, your account name is. And I believe if you go here, the cloud name, this is the cloud name. This is specific to me, but you're going to want to create a cloud name. That's uh, closest, that's specific to your account. OK, so you place demo with your cloud account and then you just fill it in. You have to just fill it in here. So again, the dimensions I would use height width. Then you want to add the video, video one. So this particular case, they had the video called dog, but instead of using dog, um, I use the public ID. Um, I didn't want to give it specific names because I don't want when I do video 100, that it's the same name as I used before. So to avoid any confusion, any confusion, I wanted to use a unique variable, which is the, uh, the public ID, All right? So we use the public ID and again, we replaced it because it's in the middle of the URL. So we don't want it to have a backslash where it'll confuse the code. And then at the end is where we apply the second video. So in this particular case, they had the dog video as the first one and then the kitten fighting as a second part of the video. And that's how they com concatenated or combined the two, the two video, the two the videos, which we're doing in our particular case, we're combining two scenes. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So after we do that, what we want to do is we want to start loading things at the air table, because again, remember this is, this is two parts to this video and to this there's two parts rather to this entire process three parts to this entire process so sorry i'm losing it here there's three parts to this entire process the first thing is the creation the second is we're going to work on the overlays which is kind of give you a sneak peek by looking into their documentation and the third piece is we get to post on social media okay so here is what we need to do next we need to create an air table so let's jump over to air table air table is going to be our spreadsheet this particular case we are going to call this uh let's call it uh image we're going to call it img to video that's called a demo. So we know it's a demo. Demo I image to video automation. Okay. And there are a few uh, fields that we need to change. So the first thing we need to do is we need the uh, public IDs, right? So that's when we want to keep track of our public IDs. So let's just edit this first field. The first thing we're going to call it is we're going to call it PC public ID. And we're going to call it original video. Okay. And it's going to be a single line text. Okay. Next, what we need to do is we edit this field and we want to do is we want to create the original prompt that we had, original um, text that we had so we can reference it. So when we, when we, for our later modules, text, and we're going to call this original, original, if I can spell, we're going to call it original image idea. Okay. And this is going to be a long text, but all right. Next, what we need to do is we need to have another public ID. Let's just edit this. And this is going to be instead of user, we want to do it as a single line text. And we are going to call it uh, public ID video with text overlay. Good. And we're just going to name our fields now. So that way we can, it'll make sense in the later videos. All right, we're going to edit the field. And we are going to call this. Actually, let's just duplicate this. Make it easy to duplicate field. And we are going to call this uh public id and this is with the text let me just expand it so we can see it here all right so we have our original video then we have our uh, original image idea then we have the the public id for the video with the text overlay and the text overlay is going to be like the caption that goes over the video this the next thing we're going to have the, another uh public id is going to have the it's going to be the video with the text and a voice overlay so we can do a voiceover as well and uh this is copy this just duplicate this again uh, edit, and this is going to be public, public ID, and let's just save that. So this next one is going to be uh, the video with the text overlay with the uh, voiceover, and we're going to have some music as well. All right, cool. Uh, the next piece, what we need to do is we need to add the status. Uh, we can edit these fields, and what we're going to do, um, we want to say, all right, let's say in, we're going to close this one. We can say in progress, right? Next one we're going to say is, um, um, post, see, I think ready, ready for social media. All right. And we'll just change this to a little different color. It's a green, oh, sorry, blue. And then the green is going to be posted 
to social media. All right, we'll turn this to green. All right, so these are the three steps. So we in progress will be the first step. The second will be after we did, after we've completed all of our overlays, then we want to say that it's ready to post on social. And after we post it on social, we want to say, are right, we posting it to social? All right, and okay, that's our status. And the third piece is we wanted to have a, we want to keep track of when we do things. So it's the last modified time. Oops. Modify. Last modified time. Cool. All right. So we can close this and we can see all the fields that we have. So we have the original, um, original, uh, public ID, which is the, this video with nothing that we ended up also pulling our original idea for the video. Then we're going to have it, the public ID with the, with the text overlay, with the text and the voice, with the text, the voice and the music. And then we have our different status codes as well. All right. So this is the completion of our air table. Okay. So let's jump back into the automation and we want to add air table. Okay. Air table. And we want to do is we want to create a record, right? We want to create a record here. And what we want to do is we want to pull in the base is going to be the demo image, video automation, image to video automation. The table is going to be table one, right? And then what we want to do is we want to pull in the original video. Let's move this to the side here. We want to pull the original video, which is going to be here. The last thing that we did which is the public ID for the original video. And the original text is going to be what we pulled in originally, the, the idea, right? Extra idea, we'll pull that in. And what else do we need? The status, we're gonna change the status to in progress. So we can map that out, hit the down arrow, tick in progress, and hit okay. So what's gonna happen is after we, after we create the image, we produce the different scenes, then we combine the two scenes into one video, and then we gotta take that video completed video, the 20 second video, and we got to throw the, the, the public ID into an air table. Okay. And the last but not least is what we want to do is we want to delete the, the scenes. We gotta do a little cleanup. Okay. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let's duplicate CS. Let's clone this and we'll put this here. All right. And the public IDs we need this time is we need scene one, not replace. We just need scene one public ID and scene two public ID. Okay, cool. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to go back to Cloudinary and we need to delete a resource and the resource we need to delete type. Um, we can map it out. It's going to be a video and the resource ID is going to be scene one. All right. And then we just need to duplicate this duplicate or clone. Good. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see and, uh, and instead of scene one, we are going to delete scene two, All right? So we're trying to keep our, our back office clean. All right. So let's hit save. And what we're going to do next is we are going to run this automation and then we're going to see how everything turned out. Okay. Let's, uh, let's run it. So, so far the, the, the picture idea was created. See so what the picture idea is, is this is a, a a firefighter surfing a tidal wave of coffee while juggling flaming donuts heading towards a skyscraper made entirely of giant, giant marshmallows. Oh, so this is going to be a fun one. Okay. So then we have the image prompt. Okay. Now the image prompt is sending everything to, um, replicate, which is using the flux AI um, language model to create the, uh, the image for us. Okay. And then we can take a peek at the dashboard to see how the image is created. Oh, looks like it is done. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. So let's, uh, open this in a new tab. Let's see how it looks. All right. So we have firefighter skating. It looks like it is coffee. It is dark. And then we see a building behind them. That's a uh, marsh marshmallow buildings behind them with flaming donuts. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So that's our image. So let's see where we're at now with the automation. Okay. It's still waiting for the, it's still letting the image leak, which is uh, already completed, but it's letting the image finish. All right. So the image was created and now we have the video prompts. It put the two scenes, then it could parse it into a JSON format, which is great. So now it's sending the first scene over to runway to create the first scene. After it creates the first scene, it should upload it to a uh, cloudinary. And then once, once it, once it does that, we can kind of take a, actually I'll let it, I'll let it run because I don't want, there's a lot of times if you kind of 
look at the image while it's still working on it, it'll lock the image. So we'll take a look at everything after it's done. The second, the second part um, now is creating the second scene uh, using the, the prompt here. So the, the second scene is uh, a Mazaleev uh, crest and a firefighter approaches. The camera slowly tilts up, revealing the towering skyscrapers of marshmallows, the donuts flaming, the, I'm sorry, the donuts flames reflect off the marshmallow walls in a dazzling cinematic glow. Cool. So created that. So now what, it, what it's doing, is it's creating the it's combining both scene one and scene two into one video and then now it's going to put all those variables into Airtable. so let's dump, dump it to air table and just do a quick refresh and we can see here on this line that it created this first uh um it created it pulled in the original video so that it's in progress okay and it pulled this and eventually once we, once we do the second and third video all of these will be uh, populated as well we'll continue to use this uh continue to use this air table all right so let's go back and it looks like we are done so let's let's hop into uh the cloudinary dashboard here let's go into the media library open that up and we should see a final video that we'll be able to pull all right this is the video right here let's open it up all right let's take a look it's not gonna you're not gonna see any sound but we'll see the videos all right so we see <laughs> We see him surfing with the donuts and uh, then it's going to reflect to scene two where it kind of scraped up. Oh, another donut magically appeared into each other. All right. And he's continuing to, to, to surf. All right. So this is the AI coming up with their own thing. Again, if you want, you can come up with your own scenes and, and kind of uh, deal with it some more or be specific as to what you want. I'm just trying to create something quirky so that way you can um, have fun with this. Okay. All right. So this is part one of three out of this series. Again, the next piece that we need to do is we need to create the overlay so that way we can add, um, we can bring the, the video to life. We can add some sound, we can add a voiceover, and we can also add uh, um, a caption on the video as well to kind of bring the video to life, okay? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe on the bottom, like and share this video. Uh, also, if you don't want to create all of this yourself, I do have a community that you just be able to click on this more button right here click on import and this entire blueprint is going to be automatically imported along with all the notes and all the codes and everything like that is going to be there as well. But if you followed along with this video and also the video I previously completed with Flux AI, you'd be able to do all of this pretty much without, without me. You can just go ahead and you can just follow step by step and then be able to complete this as well. Hope you found some value here. I'll see you on part two of this image to video creation process. All right. Using Runway, Flux AI. This is exciting stuff. All right. See you in the next video.